Hello, my name is Candace Simpson and I'm a teacher here at Parkway High School in Bossier City, Louisiana. As an educator, I am definitely most passionate about building um, meaningful relationships with each student in my classroom and setting clear uh, expectations for them when they walk in the door. I feel like this is very vital to my classroom because it helps these peer relationships open up as well as students getting familiar with me and being able to ask me questions. Because I do teach math, sometimes those questions don't come off as easy as other classes um, because it's hard and they don't like it. So just having that foundation of the relationship with these kids helps open up so many doors inside the classroom and making sure that they know that they are safe and secure with these expectations. What do I expect from them when they walk in the door every single day? The video that you're about to see is in my fourth block geometry class. Um, I have 24 students in that class. It is very diverse. We are ranging from 9th graders to 12th graders. I have 13 individual students in this class that have an IEP. So I do have a paraprofessional in the classroom. She doesn't just help those students, she helps everyone around. Um, just kind of guide them and help them through the lesson if they're struggling. As I just said, I'm teaching geometry today. And so because in our parish we are on the block schedule, I am teaching this geometry course in 18 weeks. So every day we do have to cover two lessons. So today in this video, what you're gonna be seeing is you're gonna be seeing unit three similarity and trigonometry in the springboard curriculum. You're gonna be um, seeing lesson 22-3 and 22-4. What we're looking at here is the trig portion of it. These students are gonna be learning how to find the missing sides of a right triangle and finding the missing angles of these right triangles as well. My objectives for today are for these students to be able to use these trig functions properly in order to find the missing sides and angles. My expectations are for them to broaden their understanding of how to use the trig functions and understand when to use the normal functions versus the inverse functions when we're finding the side versus the angle. So prior to this lesson, we did discuss the basic trig functions. We identified the hypotenuse, the adjacent, the opposite. Do we know that it's a right triangle? Is there a right triangle in there? Um, we went over the basics of this and we set up these ratios, but today we're going to delve straight in and we're going to be finding X's and Y's and all the fun things that come with math with this. So before this lesson, not only did they get this, but I also annotated my lessons for today because we're covering two. Where am I going to debrief? Where are we going to stop and chunk and talk about different things that need to be discussed? They do not like to be left hanging. They like answers right away. And one of the things I try to do with them is really make them think on their own, which they do not like, but I like to let them think on their own for just a second to kind of come up with something on their own before I allow them to use their group relationships. So you'll see me going from individual to shoulder partners to group work all throughout this video today in my classroom. You'll see me using time management techniques. Go ahead and grab your whiteboards for the day. We have our bell ringer on the board. We have four problems dealing with our trig ratios that we learned about. So if y'all will take one second and do this for me. We're going to put all four answers on our whiteboard and then we are going to check to see how we are doing with our ratio. Remember, number one is saying the tangent of Z. Number two is saying the cosine of C. Number three is the sine of C. And number four is the tangent of x. Are the numbers big enough for you to see them? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, go ahead and start writing your ratios on the board. Don't forget, you have your so can tell it, correct? Okay. So we have so ka tell Sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, it's looking like the majority of us have one and two done. Good. All right, checking number one, if it's the tangent of Z, what angle are we looking at? Z. We are looking at angle Z. Okay, so what, Hunter, is always across from the right angle? What is always across from the right angle? Which part? 
Somebody go on her tag team. Nyla. The hypotenuse. Very good. So across from that right angle is always the hypotenuse. So we label it H. Good. Okay. What is it? Uh, Krista, I'm coming to you. What is it when it's across from the angle? What's that called? The opposite. The opposite. Very good. Leaving you with... Seth, what part? Uh, the, uh, so like an A. A group, a, help him. Yeah. What part? Adjacent. Adjacent. Okay, that's good. So we're going to label it A. A for adjacent. It's okay. All right, so we have the tangent. So we know that tangent is O over A, correct? All right, so O over A would be 21 over? 28. Okay, good. 21 over 28. Add one more volunteer. I keep having the same one. Raise your hand. Okay, I'm coming to this group. Curtis. Uh, I believe it's 24 over 32. Okay, so tangent is TOA, right? Yeah. TOA. Okay, so you said 24 oh. over 32. 32 over 32. Okay, why? Tell me why. Uh, well, I do. Because I do. Okay, good. So whenever you said it the first time, did you realize you had flip flopped the A and the O? Yes. Okay, that's okay. Good. All right, so we are doing today, so we are completing lessons 22.3 and 22.4 in our springboard books. The pages are on your desk. Our objective is that we will use trig ratios to find unknown side lengths. We will solve real world problems using trig ratios. There's one on there that we'll tackle in just a second. We will calculate angle measures from trig ratios and we will solve right triangles today. So on page 312, let's read what's going on with our learning targets for today. Okay, so it says we are going to use, okay, trig ratios to find unknown side lengths and right triangles and we are going to solve, okay, real world problems using trig ratios. All right, so we are using, I want y'all to circle this word, use trig ratios. That's telling us what we are doing today. We are gonna use these ratios that we learned about the other day. And then our second target, if you will circle the solve, because we will be solving real world problems using the trig ratios. Okay, so on example one, Okay, number one, it says for each of the following triangles, determine the ratios requested. Then use a scientific or graphing calculator to evaluate each trigonometric function to the nearest, what? Thousand. Okay. And solve each equation for y. Round your final answers to the nearest tenth. Okay, so I'm going to set a timer on my phone. Let's do three minutes, okay? And I want you to set up these trig ratios like number one is doing. No talking. I want this to be individual work. And in a minute, we're going to check it with your partners at your table. And we are going to go now. Make sure you dance. You mark which angle you're using. All right. That's the timer. So stop what you're doing and look up here. All right. So on the first one. Did anyone get tripped up with there's two angles inside? No. Okay, some of you did, some of you didn't. Does it matter which one you use? No. No. When I went around to each table, I made sure to remind you that you needed to make sure to mark the appropriate angle. So if you were using 41, we need to use 41, right? If we're using 49, we need to mark 49. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to look at 41. How about that? Okay. So... I know that this is my hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle, correct? Mm -hmm. If you use 41, this is the opposite side. But if you used 49, it's what? Yeah. The adjacent. So the sine of 41 is O over H. So what is O? What is O? O is Y over H. What is your hypotenuse? 100. 100. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now this one says to the nearest hundredth, we need to solve the equation for y. So if your variable is on top, okay, and this is just like solving a normal equation, if your variable is on top, how do you get the number from underneath, Krista? You multiply by what? 
100. So you're literally going to multiply both sides by 100. It's just like solving an equation. What did you get? 65.6. Okay, 65. Now, let's stop for just a second, Brayden. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but it was very specific as to how many decimals we rounded to. So I'm going to tag team this with some more. Uh, very good. 65.6. Think about how we are going to draw this picture. We are modeling this picture in real life right now. How are we going to draw it on our paper? 60 seconds. I want you to put it on your paper, and I'm going to pick somebody to put it on the board. Good. I'm seeing some good stuff. All right. If you've got it, if you feel confident, let's go ahead and look at B. Corey drew it perfectly. The ladder leans, right? The ladder is the 12. We've got to think realistically here. The ladder is 12. Then it says the ladder made an angle of 75 degrees with the floor. Not up top. Where's the floor? Down. At the bottom. So Corey got that right. 75 degrees inside the triangle at the floor. And then we are trying to find how tall or how far up the wall the ladder went. So when you change this, do you think that's going to change your answer? Okay. Yes. No. No. Did it? Was it specific? Does it matter if I no. round so. I. It does not specifically say what to round it to, so I'm telling you to round it to one decimal place. So ten. Mm -hmm. Good. Y'all work together. If you're struggling with the second method, ask your your group mates, okay? Talk to your group mates about two methods, y'all. What's two methods? Uh, did you already get 9.44? I got 3.1. Far up the wall to the top of the ladder reaches, okay? All right, so this one, most of y'all's papers were correct. This is the hypotenuse. What is this piece? Okay, so is that so, ka, or tella? So, so. It's so. Method one would be 12 times ka's, okay. and then in parentheses, so 75. You, so you use trig, correct? Yes. Okay, so method one, we still use our trig ratios, okay? Method two, what is something else we've discussed in this unit? Oh, Pythagorean. Very good, Pythagorean theorem. Is what is on your exit ticket form, even though you cannot read the numbers and stuff up here. I know they're small. You have two that you have to map, find the missing side for, and then you have two questions where you have to find the missing angle. Tomorrow, when you come in, we are going to be doing application problems of our trig ratios, meaning we are going to have to do like what we did on number four. We're going to be drawing pictures and coming up with scenarios to help us solve. Are we finding the missing angle or the missing side? And we're gonna apply it to what we learned today. So, I need y'all to finish your extra ticket and turn it in um, by the end of class. So, I think that the lesson went really well today. I can see some areas of concern with the students got lost whenever the question had to deal with the other angle that they had to find and they didn't realize they were supposed to find that angle. Um, we are going to have to go over some more problems like that. Of course, they loved finding the inverse functions where they just had to find the angle. Um, they thought those were fun because there's really not a whole lot that you have to do, but they do have to remember that the angle is inside of the circle, and that's what they are trying to find. Um, overall, I feel like we hit our target very well. I think our objectives were met. I'm really looking forward to the next few days getting into this unit and seeing where the application comes into play. We're going to talk about different things that have to do with trig functions and how we can apply this to real world situations um, inside and outside of the classroom where we can see it in the future where it is now and really kind of delve a little bit deeper than what we did today which was like top level surface. Um, as we progress they will be tested on this um, in the classroom and overall I think they're going to do a great job. Thank you.